Yeah, go on. So, the Muslim made a claim that Arabic was the first language. Right. And they have to make this claim because otherwise, a person that coined the term Allah must be a prophet. Yeah. Speaking in God's name. Yeah. So, we're pretty much calling to say that that's the first language. So, what's the question? Is that the first language? Do you think it is? No, no of course not. Any, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we know what the first human language is. I don't think there's any evidence of what the first human language is. The reason being is that the first human language probably wasn't ever written, right? But one thing that we do know is that we can trace out the origins of the Arabic language. Arabic language emerges from Syriac. And we know that because there are Syriac loan words inside of the Quran. So for instance, one of the surahs of the Quran is called Tabor, means mountain. Now, the fact is, as you speak to any Arabic speaker, they have their own Arabic word for mountain. Who uses Tabor as the word for Mount Tor? Sorry, Tor. I didn't use it. No, 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 it's okay. You sure? You sure? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, who, who, who uses the word Tor for mountain? The Assyrians. It's an Aramaic word. It's a Syriac word. And you find these examples all over the Quran, like Injil. Right. And so when you look at Nabataean, if you study the Nabataeans, who were a people inside of Arabia, they had a language that is a precursor to Arabic and it is full of Syriac. So Syriac influenced the birth of uh, the Arabic language. So we don't know what the first language was, but we do know that Arabic emerged from Syriac, so which case. means that the first people that used Allah as a word, they were prophets. They, they were receiving some kind of divine revelation. They prophets. And, and Muslims refuse to accept this because they refuse to accept the testament of history. For instance, there's no evidence that Mecca existed at the seventh century. There's no evidence that Mecca existed before the seventh century. There's no, and yet Muslims claim that Mecca is the oldest settlement in human history. It's the first settlement in human history. <coughs> Other examples of contradicting history. Jesus Christ was crucified. All of history testifies to Christ's crucifixion. And yet Muslims deny that crucifixion. So again and again and again, Islamic history contradicts actual history. Any other questions? questions? Before I go on to do a talk. Go on. Uh, nice to meet you, Bob. Nice to meet you. Peace, bro. Nice to meet Alex. Uh, hi, uh, What's your I'm question, bro? Question? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad to meet you here. I, I'm trembling. I mean, I saw you. On Sorry. TV. Can I have a, a JC? Can I have a bottle that's not been drunk? I follow you on all the channels. It's yeah. Rumble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, okay, what's your question, bro? Like, uh, like um, it's true that Mecca didn't exist. Didn't exist. Uh, Thank you. Before, like a long time ago. I mean, first, first was Jer Jerusalem, not Mecca. What's your question, bro? I don't know, like, okay. Any questions, guys? Sorry, bro. I mean, I'm so emotional. Don't worry. Don't worry. Any questions, or am I going to go on and do a talk? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if there are no questions, last chance. And I want to say thank you, Bob, for guiding me on the right path. Thanks be to God. Because I'm a Christian as well. Thanks be to God. Yeah, and I ended up in the hospital and uh, he had a stroke, but he's all right. And I always pray. I mean, I start stop doing weird things. We'll pray. Thank you. God bless you. All right, guys, I want to do a talk about Summit. Right? I, I, JC, it's okay to film from behind, that way because you're not blocking people. If guys want to come in, and that way I don't have to project my voice. So I want, I want to talk about something that... Uh, who's heard of the provo proposed conversion therapy ban that the British government wants to pass? 
You heard of it, Con? Right. So I, I want to talk about the conversion therapy ban. So this is reading from The Independent, ladies and gentlemen. Liberal Democrat Baroness Burt of Solihull has tabled a bill to ban sexual orientation, gender identity, conversion practices. So the Liberal state is wanting to, to ban any action that is seen as seeking to convert people from transgender ideology and trans identity. In other words, if a man wants to say that they're a woman, the state wants to ban you from bringing them out of that error. That is what the state is proposing to do in this country. I'm reading from The Independent. A proposed law to ban conversion therapy is dangerous and would create a thought crime offence, peers have claimed. It would become an offence in the UK for any person to practice or to offer to practice conversion therapy linked to sexual orientation, gender identity under a private member's bill tabled by the Liberal Democrat Baroness Burt of Solihull. Lady Burt said her bill is needed as the government efforts to introduce a ban have stalled and insisted her proposal would not criminalise open conversations in any way, but instead protect LGBT plus people from harm. But the draft legislation split peers, with some claiming it would limit the ability of parents, teachers, psychiatrists and religious practitioners from discussing matters with children and others. In other words, talking to them in a way that suggests that actually if you're born a boy, you are a boy. If you're born a girl, you are a girl. In other words, the state is seeking to legislate that you cannot contradict what a person feels to be true. You must simply go along with it. You must simply affirm it. You must simply validate it. The bill received an unopposed second reading as is convention in the Lords, but is likely to face a strong challenge from critics at the committee stage. Now, let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. Increasingly, what we're seeing in the British state are thought crimes being passed by the state. We already have in law in the United Kingdom the idea that praying in your head outside of an abortion clinic is a crime, ladies and gentlemen. We have in this country a political party willing to pass a law that states the criticism of Muslimness will become a criminal offence if Labour wants to pass such a law. What we are seeing, ladies and gentlemen, is the fall of the Liberal state and the rise of the alt-left state. The alt-left, the extreme left, are slowly but surely taking control of our nation states as they have done in Canada, as they have done in Scotland. In Canada, as they have done in Ireland. In Canada, over 30 churches were burned to the ground and the Prime Minister of Canada said that he could understand why. Based upon an anti-Christian lie, that the church over a hundred years ago had allowed the mass murder of children. A lie that was disproven. But the, President, the Prime Minister of Canada, his King's, His Majesty's Prime Minister, has not offered an apology. This Prime Minister see, sought to stop a legitimate protest by Canadian truckers 
by seizing control of their bank accounts and freezing their bank accounts, despite the fact that they were breaking no law. The Taoiseach of Ireland is right now passing laws that are the strictest laws against free speech that the Western world has ever known. You can be arrested in Ireland for simply having something found offensive or hate-filled on your phone. The Scottish Parliament wanted to pass a law that made private conversations in your own home that could be deemed hateful illegal. The Scottish Government wanted to pass a law that placed a state worker as the overseer of every child in Scotland. The Scottish Parliament wanted and has passed a law that states that you can self-identify your gender. What we are seeing in the West is the rise of the alt-left and no one is talking about it. No one is talking about it because our minds and our culture have been steered by an alt-left media. The only threat that we are ever told about is the alt-right. And wherever this alt-left media can, they try to hide from the British people the Islamist threat. And that is why our government, despite the fact that 90% of all terrorist claims, all terrorist investigations, all terrorist plots are emerging from within the Muslim community, He's trying to deal with the alt-right as, as if it poses an equal threat to our society as the Islamists. Ladies and gentlemen, the alt-left is a danger to our culture, our civilization, and our way of life. If you vote Labour, you are voting for an alt-left party. If you vote for the Conservatives, you vote for a party that is cowed and fearful of the alt-left. Ladies and gentlemen, we Christians are to be the only people who are willing to tell truth to power and to stand up for what is right across Europe. We Christians are the only ones that will have the ideological resources to stand up against the evil of the alt-left. But that evil, ladies and gentlemen, seeks also to overtake our churches. And we must guard our churches from the politics of the alt-left. Because the alt-left will not settle that any corner of society can oppose them. The alt-left are intolerant. The alt-left are tyrannical. The alt-left are dictatorial. The alt-left are against freedoms of speech and religion. And so as Christians, we must oppose the alt-left for the good of the church and the good of the kingdom of God. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Go on, Khan. What's the way to stop it? What's the way to sort of eradicate the threat from the old day? So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is, what can we do about it? The answer to that question is that we become political activists for the church. We fight the culture wars for the church. We fight, ladies and gentlemen, for creating a Christian culture by separating and creating a Christian economy. 
The reason why the left have such control over our culture is because the left dominate the economy. They dominate money and money talks, ladies and gentlemen. We have to create an alternative economy to Google, to Amazon. We have to get behind Christian businesses. We have to build an alternative society. And the best way to do that as Christians is to form Benedict communities where we mass emigrate into a single place. We dominate that place. We dominate its culture, its economics, and its politics. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Is there anybody who has to listen, maybe, in the government? So, ladies and gentlemen, we know that there are people in the Conservative Party who have tried to sound the alarm. Suella Braverman, Lee Anderson, and how did the Conservative Party treat them? It was to punish them politically. Let's be clear, the Conservative Party is not the party to vote for if you want to stand against the alt-left, because the alt-left already has beaten the Conservative Party. If you want my advice, about who to vote for in the next UK election, I would say this, if you are a Christian, vote for the Christian People's Alliance. If you can't vote for the Christian People's Alliance, then vote for the Reform Party. We need to destroy the Labour Party and the Conservative Party that are basically the same political party so that we can set ourselves free from this liberal progressive dictatorship that is creeping upon us law by law, attitude by attitude. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Go on, bro. Can't hear you. So the main point, ladies and gentlemen, is that the political elites of the Western world are destroying our freedoms based upon an ideological prism that is not connected to reality. They're taking away your freedom of speech. They're legitimizing anti-Semitism. They're legitimizing Christophobia in Canada. Over 30 churches have been burned to the ground and the Canadian Prime Minister said that he could understand why. In France, over 500 churches have been attacked and the French government is doing nothing to defend those churches. In Britain, there are Christian refugees who are being attacked by Muslim refugees in refugee centres and the state is failing to protect them. There are converts from Islam who are being murdered and suffering murder attempts and the state is turning a blind eye. The state is passing laws that make your thinking illegal. You can be arrested now in the United Kingdom for thinking, ladies and gentlemen. We have police officers calling people up, telling them that they are here to check their thinking, ladies and gentlemen. This is 1984 kind of stuff. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are not aware about it because the liberal media constantly shepherds you to think that something else is the problem. Not the elites, not the people that rule you. It is the people that rule you that are the enemy of the people. It is the elites that are the enemy of us all. 
and we must drive those elites out of their positions of power, influence and authority. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Suppose we're going to say 20 to 40 years, Christians, they fail to take care of the problem, they don't take care of the problem, and the outlet, they win. What is the final incarnation of the outlet state? What, what is, what is, what is the final crystallization? So what does the victory of the alt-left look like? If the alt-left win, a euthanasia will be legal. And those who simply feel depressed will be able to commit suicide. If the alt-left win, abortion at any stage will be legal. And you will be able to chop up little babies just the day before they are due to be born. If the alt-left win, your ability to travel freely will be restricted in the cities in which you live and internationally. If the alt-left win, religious thought will be restricted, prayer will be restricted, the preaching of the gospel will be restricted, churches will be persecuted. If the alt-left win, the Islamists also win because the alt-left refuses to see that the Islamists are a threat to the existential existence of Western civilization. And so the alt-left consistently clear the ground for the Islamists to take ground. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to you. If you want to stand up against the alt-left, even if you are not a Christian, then unite yourself in alliance with the church and support the church in its battle against the alt left. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Our solution to religion is more religion. So, ladies and gentlemen, he says the solution to religion is more religion. Such so the problem is religion, is there a solution to religion? Such is the ignorance of the atheist and the militant agnostic. Ladies and gentlemen, Christianity built Western civilization. Your language, your calendar, your culture, your sense of right and wrong, your sense of how to do politics, what your political institutions should look like, the idea that the state doesn't have the right to rule over you, all of it, all of it emerged from the teachings of the Christian church. The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, the West is currently dying is because of ignorance like yeah. this man yeah. and ignorance like this man yeah. okay. who are so blinded by their enlightenment prejudice against the Christian faith that they are willing to ignore the loss of all of our freedoms, the very death of our Western civilization. It is not that the West is better because of the absence of religion, the more the West has abandoned Christianity, the worse it has become. Working class communities are pilfered with intoxicant and uh, uh, substance abuse. Why? Because they abandoned religion. Our families are broken down. Why? Because we abandoned religion. We don't even have enough children to support the continuation of our own population. Why? Because of the abandonment of religion. Why are we dying in the West? Because we are abandoning religion. What the West needs more is more religion, not less. And it needs the right religion, the Christian religion. 
because Islam is not the answer to the cancer of liberalism. It is just a different form of disease. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I stand up against, I mean, an, an, an addition, I stand up against, and you, you, you say it very well because I was about to be aborted when, before my mom gave me birth. I was about to abort it. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we can. So, it's, what's your question, bro? No question, addition. Okay, we're just taking questions. Taking questions. I'm thank, I thank God for your mother's change of heart.